Good morning. Uh, the name of my project here is Why Does Software Cost So Much? Toward a Causal Model. The problem we're trying to address is that oftentimes programs don't know how to uh, predict costs from certain changes they're making to the program um, and uh, thus don't have an adequate basis for controlling costs. Our solution is a causal model. Um, and we see a causal model as helping guide program offices in uh, when they make changes to um, programs in development and sustainment, uh, maintain certain cost targets. Uh, such a causal model would also benefit could cost, should cost negotiations, be the basis for incentives, um, and also provide a uh, more focused basis for bidders to compete on cost drivers in their proposal. The SEI has been doing this actually for about seven years, this being cost estimation, cost estimation research with QUELS. And uh, it's just in the past year we've been bringing causal modeling. And we anticipate continuing this work for another three years at least. Um, so why do we care about causal modeling? Well, the takeaway is, is that correlation isn't enough. Um, you, you want to learn what are the cause and effect relationships. Um, Things like machine learning and deep learning get you to correlations, but correlation and correlations are good for predictions, but they do not predict what happens when you make a change uh, to the situation. And that's where what causal models buy you. Um, and causal modeling uh, works with observational data. So as opposed to the randomized control trial, which is sort of the gold standard. Um, you can actually take a data set and discover the graph, the causal graph underlying that data. Uh, causal modeling is, and, and latent variables go back over a century, but it's really been in the past three decades that we have now uh, more than a couple dozen causal uh, discovery algorithms. And um, a lot of the researchers are here at Carnegie Mellon and the University of Pittsburgh. And NIH, for the past few years, has funded an open source software development effort to make these algorithms available to medical researchers, uh, investigators of cancer, investigators of what the brain is doing, like the big brain project. And so what we're doing is we're taking those algorithms and applying them to cost estimation data. We have a two-fold methodology or approach. One's kind of local, tactical. And the other one's global strategic. I'll deal with the local tactical first. Uh, what you have is um, a data set. You're an individual researcher, cost estimation researcher. You have a data set. Uh, you can apply Tetrad, which is the name of a tool in which a couple dozen of these algorithms are bundled together, um, to learn a causal model, which is actually a directed acyclic graph, or DAG. And then you can estimate that model. And the value, again, of a causal model is that it can predict the effects of manipulations. Uh, alternatively, you can run it in validation mode. That's the lower box there, formulate hypotheses. You can come in and say, this is how I think the world works. And then you can test a data set against that model for fit uh, and evaluate the model. From a strategic perspective, the landscape is different. We have lots of cost estimation tool vendors. We have cost estimation researchers, such as at the University of Southern California, which is where Barry Bain uh, has his group. And um, there are agreements that are signed that data is kind of off limits to the SEI. The good news from a strategic perspective is, is that there are algorithms for stitching together directed acyclic causal, causal graphs that come from different sources uh, without having to ha actually have your hands on the data set. And so what we plan strategically is to, and we've begun this uh, this year with the University of Southern California, is to teach how to do causal discovery 
have them apply to their data sets, which we never see, but then they report the DAGs to us, and then we stitch them together here into a full causal model. Um, as I already mentioned here in terms of key activities, University of Southern California connection, there's been um, at least one paper that's been submitted for publication using causal modeling. We believe it will be the first that will be published, perhaps, if it's accepted. Um, and we've also been looking at some data sets. I will focus mostly on just one data set just to give you a flavor of what causal discovery looks like. Uh, this data set you're about to see is from the software resource data report, which programmers, uh, sorry, programs are required under DOD 5000 to provide a before and after picture of a program. The before picture shown in gold are the estimates. So you'll see there things related to uh, requirements, architecture, coding, and testing. And in the blue, you'll see the second paired report from the same, uh, for the same program, and these are the actuals. So we took pairs of such data, 134, applied a rather conservative causal discovery uh, threshold to it, and uh, what you see here, and this, remember, there's several years separating the estimates from the actuals, so this is actually kind of interesting to tease out. But in particular, if you see those vertical lines going down, that is showing there's a direct causal influence um, of the box on top and the box on the bottom. And for those of you who would prefer a more technical explanation, um, the relationship exists uh, conditioned on any subset of the remaining variables. And that's essentially what determines when there is an edge. Um, if we look at this from a different perspective, the variables in the center horizontally from left to right are mostly dealing with effort. And you'll notice there that requirements and code tend to drive, have, have more statistically significant causal effects on total effort than do time spent in architecture or time spent in integration and test. And I, I think if you think about that, I can tell you in the poster session later why, what I think about that, but I think that actually makes a lot of sense. But you also notice something curious. Um, oh, sorry, these are the requirements and, and code counts uh, that you see here. But what's curious is duration doesn't seem to have any causal connection to the rest of the graph, neither the uh, estimates nor the actuals. And also team experience. Now, this doesn't mean team experience is not important. There's an alternative scenario here. Team experience might be perceived to be so important that program managers ensure it's done right, and so it does not become causally significant, which is a kind of caveat. With any kind of learning you do, you need to know something about um, the source, the nature of the source from which you're getting the data, and this is no different. We've applied this, to, uh, this technology to other uh, data sets, uh, famously the uh, Kokomo 81 data set, where uh, 25 factors were looked at. Um, and the only one that predicts cost is software size. The other factors correlate with cost. But what they instead do is through a chain, causal chain, the effect size, which affects cost. So. Um, so uh, we've had some presentations. I mentioned a submission for publication. Uh, to wrap things up, we think the opportunity is right for causal technology. We think we can bring science, data, good data science, and, and ground cost estimation, working with a community of collaborators um, on a more uh, scientific basis for cost estimation. I think I have a minute. for questions. Um, so have you been able to look at this uh, as dependent or independent on um, development methodologies? So in particular, let's say waterfall versus agile development? Uh, not yet. Uh, that is in our plans for the next three years. Um, so at this point, uh, we do have, in some of our data sets, I guess I should stand here, in some of our data sets, we do have such information. Um, but in the initial scrub to see what we could see in the data, uh, we held that information back. So that's to be continued and to be determined, I guess.
good question. Thank you. And I guess I'm out of time, or is there just room for one more question? Oh, this will be the last one. It'll be quick. Uh, about how long before you think you will have something that we, the, the DOD, can put into a contract, a levy on uh, a potential offer to say they have done this and have, can give us an estimate? 137 days. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, um, excellent question. Um, and and uh, if, if you're interested, sir, I'd be happy to talk to you about it uh, afterwards. I, I don't have a short answer to that. Uh, but thank you.